Welcome back. Courtesy of Echo Bank, the Pan-African bank, we now serve you AM business. Now we ask, is Ghana's rising unemployment crisis testament to the disconnect between academia and industry? Players in the technical and vocational institutes believe so. CEO of the Design and Technology Institute, Constance Swanica, wants an overhaul of our educational system, saying it does not meet current industrial needs. In today's AM business, Charles Aita explores how TVET can be the next hub for employment in Ghana. Here at the Design and Technical Institute, class is in session. Uh, I'm using HTML and C++ to create a web page. Uh, we just we started this last week. Last week we learned HTML, and this week we started with CSS. Nora Mohammed comes from a family of eight that bears a history of failed entrepreneurs. She wants to break this cycle, this time around through the use of technical and vocational training. My sister is an entrepreneur and she's facing a lot of challenges, looking at the fact that we are moving into a technological world mm. and most of the things you have to do, especially in this era, is IT based. So I decided to come to DTI to learn more of IT, mm. to equip myself more and also fit well into the world, world of today. You know, you hear the finance minister say that graduates would have to now look at you know being entrepreneurs because the public purse is full how does this inform you as a lady moving into the text the, the the tech space as an entrepreneur being a lady into the entrepreneurship uh, entrepreneurship space mm -hmm. i think the knowledge i have in it will help me to build my entrepreneurship skills mm -hmm. and also help me become a better entrepreneur and also at my youthful age uh, let's say something like software development in entrepreneurship you can create something like your website where you can use to advertise your stuff graphic designing when you where you can create flyers and other stuff for mm. advertisement tvet still remains a fair choice for many students out there who find blue collar jobs less rewarding as compared to white collar jobs these students are quite busy with their tools it's a well done division and I'm quite interested in hearing the story of Regina. She's in the second Anglais Fair. To get to hear her story about why she chose this male-dominated profession and the dreams that she has in achieving this particular uh, you know, feat of becoming a female welder in her own right. Yeah. Here in the welding department of DTI is a daring young woman who wants to create an empire of this male-dominated space. So for how long have you been training? It's been a month only, but then it's really impressive how quickly they teach us. Okay. Yes. And how they put all these skills into us. Imagine when you're done after a year. Yeah. We'll be fully equipped for the working field. Mm. And we're also going to be placed at our various positions. So, yeah. so, what, so where would you want to practice the skill in? Where would you want to practice the skill? Outside Ghana. Outside Ghana. Yes, but then definitely within Ghana because this is where it all starts all right. and this is where it all is. I can open their arms. lock the person. So once I lock it, there is a hydraulic jack here, which has the ability to cause the patient, when jack can cause the patient to come up. Once the patient is up, I can just wheel the patient off to wherever I want to. Even to the sitting room, to the bedroom, wherever. Whenever I need the height to be adjusted, I just use the jack over here to cause the lifting motion to happen. And that's wonderful. Once they are able to come up with this, our hospitals need this. Our nurses, nurses need to be relieved of the burden they have in lifting patients every day. Our homes, we need this thing. Once they are, they are able to develop this idea and come up with a better version of this, they are already in business. As Ghana's unemployment crisis deepens, industry players in the technical 
and vocational education training are making a case for an overhaul of the education system. Acting head of DTI, Jimama Jackson, walks me through how this can be achieved. We actually go out into the community. So, for instance, this year we visited places like Abubloshi, the timber market, um, tech shelter, etc. And then, th with the hope of the students actually identifying problems in the communities, and these children come from all over the um, all over Ghana, so different regions, and they have specific problems in their communities. So they identify the problems, and then they come up with solutions, and we help them to um, to solve these problems in their communities. We are seeing impact solutions from this institute. Right. How does this also impress on the entire need for the next generation of entrepreneurs in Ghana? Okay, with that, what we're encouraging um, students is don't sit down and um, wait for somebody to give you a job, but rather look into yourself, look into the talents that you have and develop the skills and get the right help and start something on your own. Statistics from the World Bank shows that 50% of Ghana's workforce are underemployed and 12% faced with youth unemployment. Unemployment cases plateaued from 2017 but spiked through to 2020 in the heat of the COVID pandemic. But what could have gone wrong with Ghana's inability to link academia with industry? Young people are being churned out, you know, year after year. But what is missing is the hands-on. Industry is also not a training ground, you know, so there's a need for higher level conversation when we need to look at how do we close all these gaps. Just as many other entrepreneurs, Constance has had to various hurdles to achieve her goals including the birth of the design technology institute she wants a relook into an educational system that aligns with government industrialization drive industrialization does not happen without uh, quality human talent you know uh, human capital and um, build bridges and roads and construction and agriculture and, and you name it, mm. the industrialization agenda cannot happen if we don't have people who, like I said, work in, in overalls and work mm. on factory floors. Take the example of Germany, take the example of China, India, you name it. All the industrialized countries had a solid TVET system. Mm. So we have woken up to the realization that, well, it's not office jobs anymore, but let's spin it back to historically the colonial era. We were trained to be civil servants. Exactly. To, you know, to suit a particular need. But now we've reached a stage where we have to produce what we eat, um, produce what we sit on, um, begin to champion our own causes. And then I would also like us to, to talk about when the border is shut, you know, um, post-COVID. Exactly. We leapfrogged into the fourth industrial revolution, right? Yeah, instantly. And then, uh, yeah. You know, economies world over were closing borders, closing producing borders. things for yeah. themselves, and Ghana was left. We were just so much advantaged, mm -hmm. you know, to see some of these SMEs strive to produce things locally. But yet again, it begs the question about the future of jobs in Ghana and the state in which we are prepared to embrace the future of jobs in Ghana. As you sit in here as an industrialist, I will term it that way, and a TVET professional, how concerned are you about the future of jobs, the state of the future of jobs post-COVID-19 in Ghana? I think, for me, I'm not worried because it presents new opportunities. Mm -hmm. you know. And so let's discuss new opportunities. But do you think we're ready for this opportunity? Again, I always say that because I'm an entrepreneur, thinking again as an entrepreneur, mm -hmm. um, and have an entrepreneurial mindset, seeing opportunities, mm -hmm. opportunities everywhere. So if
if you look at a few industries who quickly realize that, oh, we can produce masks and all of a sudden, oh, sanitizers. Mm -hmm. For me, that was a low hanging fruit. Yeah. Prior to that, everything was being imported, you know. Mm -hmm. So look at the new industries that open up. Sadly, a few shut, but then presented new opportunities. How do we begin to then look at in the next few years what does Ghana need? How do we begin to train young people to look in these sectors? Agriculture. I always tell young people that, look, do you realize the opportunities? Again, this is where the biggest absorber of youth will be. Mm -hmm. We're not saying that farm was in order, but look at how we move from subsistence farming into light mm -hmm. manufacturing, mm -hmm. into you know, industrialized farming. Mm -hmm. So using your engineering background or mechanical engineering background, produce machines. As Ghana's unemployment crisis deepens, the finance minister, Ken Oforiota, mentioned no words in forewarning university students and graduates not to expect jobs in the public.